Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Today we will learn how to play Superstition by Stevie Wonder. I'm going to be using the funky clavinet keyboard sound, but of course you can use a piano sound or any other sound that you may feel like. Now I hope you're all subscribed and press the little like button because we are just about to get going. In the original studio recording of Superstition, Stevie Wonder actually used two keyboard parts he overdubbed himself twice to get the sound of the main riff. Of course, when we're playing live, we cannot do that. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to teach you guys a way to play the main riff, which is an approximation of the sound that is heard in the original recording. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to play the left hand, the right hand, and then we're going to be pairing them together. It sounds like this. That's it. This part essentially loops itself over and over again until we reach the chorus, which is entirely different chords. So what we, did we do here? We start with the low E flat using the pinky, which is, by the way, the only time during this left hand riff where we use the pinky. So the first note pinky, nothing else is pinky. Okay, we have an octave, so pinky thumb. Now our thumb goes to the G flat. And A flat is played with the fourth finger. Let's do it again and now pay attention to the rhythm. Notice that when we get to the G flat, it's a little bit further away, rhythmically speaking, and there's a good reason for that, which will be revealed when we incorporate our right hand into the riff. All right? So again, you need to be playing this very percussively. You don't want to be sounding like that. That's not good. It's almost like playing a drum instrument on a keyboard, right? So very percussively staccato. And now to the right hand. Notice how my hand is simply resting on top of the black keys here. It doesn't move anywhere. So we have five keys in total. Thus, every finger gets a key and just stays there. So we're using a lot of fourth intervals. We start with. Now we go everything, thumb, up, down, right? And the bottom A flat note functions as a ghost note. So it's a rhythmic ornamentation rather than an important melodic note. It is barely heard. So again, from the beginning till this point. Right, and then we have the fourth intervals again. And during the riff in general, I incorporate a lot of these ghost notes, always with the thumb with the A flat. All right, so one last thing to keep in mind about playing this. Usually as classical pianists, you want to have your hand like this, like a mountain with this. Uh, point as the top of the mountain, but when playing funk, we need our hands a little bit flatter, right? So we're not playing Chopin, we're playing funk, right? So both hands together may sound like this. Remember how we talked about the G flat in our left hand, how it was a little bit rhythmically delayed. 
it all becomes apparent why it is so when we hear both hands. Watch this. You see, the G flat comes right in before the ghost note. Watch for this again. So, when playing both hands now together, I would recommend playing the riff in chunks. For example, practice each one individually. This would be the first one. Loop it around. Now this one. Together. Right, and then you can add the rest. So you basically add and add until you reach the whole thing and you loop it several times to play it, to be able to play it confidently before you can move on and say that you're done with it. Now let's get to the chorus. It has some really juicy chords in it. So when Stevie sings, when you believe in things that you don't understand, the chords are as follows. Now let's see how I develop that harmony into something more rhythmically interesting. Right, so that was fun. With the right hand, I'm not doing anything special. It's basically whole notes. And in the end, a little bit of downwards glissando. Now, with the left hand, I'm playing octaves, but do pay attention to the passing notes. So it goes like this. Now, after the chorus, if you have a brass sound on your keyboard, or you don't have any other player in your band playing this part, you can do the brass thing. So it goes like this. With the left hand for context. Lastly, there's another important vamp that appears later in the song that is very useful to know. Sounds like this. The crucial thing, fingering wise, is to recognize the two occasions in which we need to switch fingers. First time we switch to the thumb, second time we switch to the second finger. Follow with me. We start E flat, fourth finger. Now first, second, third, fourth. Now we switch to the thumb, so B flat would be on the thumb. And we end up playing E flat with the third finger. We play it again, but this time using the second finger. And the rest of the notes are already ready for us, so we don't need to move our head. All right, this thing in the context of the left hand sounds like this. What did I do here using my left hand? I basically am playing a simplified version of the reef bass pattern. So it goes like this. By the way, guys, I would just like to remind you that on my website, I have a lot of free tips 
guides useful for any piano students, as well as free sheet music for beginner and intermediate players. And of course, if you'd like more, you can always enroll to private lessons with me online. I'm actually accepting new students right now. So let me know, send me a message, comment, say hi, press like, whatever you want. I appreciate you watching, I appreciate you listening, and I'll see you guys in the next video.